Good afternoon, Brian with Grand Roofing. We are actually getting into a chimney here that I had been at a few weeks ago, looked at, and we did a quick roof leak investigation in this chimney. And I was guessing without tearing into the roof, it looked like maybe the shingles didn't flash under, they just went on top. It was also raised up right here, water coming down and due to the keyways, that kind of looked like the area. There's actually, th that's not the issue. There are some other issues going on. I want to point out some things when it comes to quality, craftsmanship, the little things that get overseen and some basics on flashing. We're just, let's just get into this and kind of point some things out. First off, you got ice and water. Ice and water is a good product and it has its place to be used. It doesn't mean you're going to be a good successful roofer. You don't want to rely on the ice and water. Ice and water is intended for certain areas of the roof when you get ice damming or water blowing back up under. You don't want water getting to it in the first place. So first off, what's going on, on this side, why it's leaking and the ice and water and how it ties into it. The roofer that put this on had this shot down. But they completely, well, let's back up, let's go to the ice and water. So typically, when you have ice and water, when you're reflashing a chimney, you want to roll your ice and water up all sides of the chimney, just like a skylight. In this case, this counter flashing is solid, comes down to the roof, it's all sweat together with a solder. And there's no way to get your flashing, your ice and water rolled up the chimney. And let's look at that, let's peek up under here. You can see, you got brick right there, you got the chimney, just the ice and water dumped down it. But see all this dirty water trail? Where is that coming from? We'll look right up above you at that right there. Nail holes, nail placement. What blows me away is even though the roofer threw this in, threw ice and water in, they just completely left all of the nail holes that were in this flashing close to the flashing. We'll go around the back, it gets way worse over there. They should have had this back down here. Probably could have sealed this right here with a caulking of some sort to eliminate it or just redone it like we're about to do. Just it blows me away because so many people think, oh, I used ice and water, it's good. That's not what it's intended to do. Especially when you have nails rust out and you got a penetration like that going right through it. So again, water coming down this flashing right here. All the nails that are extremely too close to this corner here, it's not intended to be. You got this little water trail of evidence coming over. It's all stained, it's all nasty. Nail rusting out, water up here still after a week or so of being dry, just cold. Water all up in here. How's it getting there? It's catching a top corner here and running over. If you're gonna run a solid piece of flashing on anything, whether it's a wall or not, I'm not a fan of it. Step flashing is better, but you can have this done successfully. There's a few tips I would say. Do not nail near the corner, keep them out plenty far and put a bead of sealer to seal it down and then dog ear any corner like this right here. I'll go over this first. Water coming down, it hits this. What's it gonna do? It's gonna follow the path of least resistance and also water surface tension. It's gonna fall right over here. For those that don't think that happens, look right here, here it is, it's coming over. We're about a foot and a half out and there's still water up here. So if you would have simply taken a hook blade and simply cut a little corner off of this right here, water coming down is gonna catch this and run down. That's not my obvious choice. You wanna not let water get to it. So step flash would eliminate that. So if you have a full shingle coming over, your step flash goes up on your counter flash comes down to near the reveal here in this area. There's no corner for it to get to. Then your next shingle step, shingle step. That's why I call it step. Every step of the way it gets a new piece. You don't have a corner protrusion like this. On that note, if you've got say a box vent you're putting in, when you cut those shingles to get it shoved under, you're gonna have those corners too. So I recommend dog ear any one of those shingles that come around that box vent you're installing or any type of flashing where water comes down a channel and could catch a corner like this. But look at the nails, the nail holes, the old shingle, the debris here. Water's just trickling in here. And hey, you got ice and water, but it's not running up, causing a channel for it to run back out on. It's just simply running right back into the chimney. You think that's bad? Let's go to the other side. Look at all this. How is all this water stain marks getting up in here? Could it be because these nail holes? I'm just going to say Mr. Obvious. I think so. Look at this. It gets real good right here. Ah, the beauty of getting into other people's work. So typically when you roof a roof section up and it goes past your top, the point of running it that high is so you can finish it off with a decorative piece of ridge cap. Well, to do that, you can do one of two things. You can fold it over, kind of raise it up, or you can cut it back near this. I don't care, I'm not here to say one's better than the other. But what I can say is either of those two options of cutting them back near the top ridge or folding it over is better than cutting it way down here. We have an amazing 
half inch coverage right here. Not much at all. Oh, but Brian, wait, we have a headlamp under there. That's not intended to be watertight. It's supposed to help cover the keyways of the shingle above it. Look at this. The flashing doesn't even come down onto it. But hey, we have ice and water under it. We're a pro roofer, right? It's not going to leak. Oh, let's look at the flashing in the copious amount of nail holes up here in the water trail. Took this apart. Hey, they had caulking caulking it, but water's going to run it under this next piece here when you're ponding behind a chimney like this. And there's the evidence of it right here. Yeah, we have a nice solid sweat soldered piece of metal flashing here. What's the point of doing all that? Well, whoever did this originally probably did a pretty good job. It's whoever did the newer roof coating, roof layer, with all this just carelessness. But hey, when you roof it and it looks good, nobody's going to see it, nobody's going to question you. It's probably not going to leak right away because it's going to slowly find its way in. This is horrible. It's cut short all the way under there, too. It's not just behind the chimney. This is pitiful. I got a couple other little things I got to do here. I want to just show I was wrong in what I thought was going on here with this hump build up right here. Nevertheless, there was a leak where I thought. It just wasn't because of that. But hey, in my defense, I wasn't tearing apart the roof to look at it. I was just going off of looking at it strictly visually. That's it. Just it blows me away what we miss here. What people miss, what they do. And the fact that way too many people rely way too heavy on ice and water. Ice and water has its place. It's a good product when it's used right. But ice and water is not intended to just use wherever you think is a last resort to cover some stupidity and stupid quality of roof. Oh. It just blows me away. By the way, how's this little thing doing? Is it good? I noticed there's a bit of a gain to it, so I had to pull it down a little bit because I'm used to speaking loud. So I think a simple remedy is just move it down about eight inches or so. Hopefully we're pretty good. A little breeze here and there. Hopefully you haven't heard any of it. Let's see here. I don't have time to keep filming. I don't have a good way of doing this. I don't have a filmer. I got to get busy. But what I believe I'm going to do, once I get all this, I got to go down another row of shingles. Just remove this mess of stuff. This could be good because it's pretty daggone rigid. But the problem is they shot nail holes everywhere. And I'm not going to rely on a bead of caulking. That makes me no better than anyone else. What I think I'm going to do is get my angle grinder out and cut this about a quarter inch, half inch up on all sides. Just remove this completely. Notch these corners, all four corners right here on the back side. We're going to put ice and water in, try to wrap it up under there since we'll be able to flip it under about an inch and a half or so. We're going to shingle up, put a piece of bottom metal in, coil stock, probably to do away with a lot of this rust. There's a counter piece technically way up here. I think I can get it bent high all the way up under. Same on the sides. Step flash it. And on the back, again, it's got a piece that I feel like it's a little loose. Even though it looks bad, it's still pretty thick and rigid. If I can notch this right here on both sides and get my back pan metal extended out, solid piece, down over this, I'll replace this shingle, get it up higher, and extend the corners and fold those down once the roof comes up under them. A little bead of sealer under that just in case you get water surface tension waking up under hopefully this makes sense and when it's all said and done i will double check if there's anything needs caulked and i will paint this top piece of steel that is now rusting the aluminum i will be putting in on these sides are coil stock it's aluminum painted so no issues of them rusting <sighs> wow boys some fine quality work right here cut it back Barely cover it. Well, this one's coming up a little bit higher. I <laughs> just can't wait to see the pipe bit repair I got to do on the other side. I mean, what are people thinking when the water comes flows around this? I don't know. These are the issues right here. These couple guys where water... I bet if I look in here, I can get that up high enough. <clears throat> there it is. You can see all the water coming in right there at that one. You can see the nail metal shooting down right there's where the dirty water trail is and that one right there it's perfect right where that lines up right there on that ice and water i gotta get busy 
you know what to do if you like it give it a thumbs up and until next time be safe we'll see you on the next video